Hey there, folks. Um, well, hello there, and welcome to the ADR livecast. Here we are live, uh, and um, got a really exciting livecast for you because I've got a couple brothers here, Eric Banks and Mike Banks. And Mike underwent uh, disc replacement <laughs> 10 months ago, um, went back to weightlifting, and in fact, just recently opened up his own gym. And in fact, we've got him live from his gym. Um, and this is going to be great. Mike, say hi to everybody. Hey there, everyone. This is going to be uh, really cool. And then, uh, so Mike's in upstate New York at his gym. Eric is in sunny San Diego. Uh, yeah. And um, I think he is drinking a German beer and smoking a cigar that he picked up in Germany when they went there on the trip. Um, uh, it's impolite of him not to share, but uh, oh, that's just if I could. Yeah, a little hard to do it through the uh, through the screen. So what I'd like to do is let me um, kind of introduce this real quick, and then we're going to get to some questions with Mike and Eric as they tell us about uh, about their story. So um, let me change the view here and make sure I've got this going correctly. Give me just a sec. All right. So um, what I'd like to do is first, if you're watching this video, we're going to do live Q&A. So you're going to have a chance to go ahead and chat questions, uh, put your questions into the chat and we'll do our best to answer them, whether it's about disc replacement or uh, Mike and Eric's experience with um, uh, going to Germany and all of that. Um, you can ask questions of these guys and we'll be happy to do our best to answer. For that to work though, you need to ask the questions in the right place. And so wherever you happen to be watching this, go watch it at the Inanda um, page where, um, uh, and that's, uh, if you go to Facebook and just search for Inanda, which is E-N-A-N-D-E, -E, that's E-N-A-N-D-E, -E, then you'll be watching it at the right place. There's also a link at the, in this chat uh, so you can see where to go. Put your questions there. Um, and so please do that. Um, and then uh, let's just get this thing underway. So um, first, uh, Mike, would you do us a favor? Tell us a bit about how you got hurt and what your situation was like when you were considering getting uh, surgery. Sure. So it was back um, roughly around 2005, I believe it was, when I first originally started experiencing some back issues. Um, it probably was just a list of things that I uh, had done in my younger years that um, put me in a bad position with my lower back. Um, and at that point, I uh, ended up doing a laminectomy um, on my L4, L5 region. They took about 40% of that out of my back at the time. Um, and back then, that was kind of the standard was to do something like that and um you know i would i would say that it did give me good quality of life for roughly i don't know um 10 years i guess and then um i went on for quite some time and started to find a passion for fitness and working out and need to definitely lose some weight and um then later on um back uh, a year ago, um, doing some lifting in the gym, I uh, heard it again. And at that point, anything that was left in the L4, L5 region was pretty much gone at that point. So um, I was pretty much bone on bone and uh, bedridden for about eight months. What was that like? I mean, how did you feel going from a really active lifestyle to that? Because, yes. I mean, it just sounded like a nightmare. Yeah, you know, it, it certainly was. It took uh, pretty much my life away. I thought life was over as I knew it. Um, I, you know, just trying to get some in information as to what my options were here in the U.S. Uh, it just wasn't good. Um, everyone wanted to do fusion on my back. I was even told by one doctor that they could go in and do a, a small little uh, repair or of taking more material out, but you know, there was nothing really left to take out anyway. So every time I, every corner I turned, every doctor I met with, um, it just, it really destroyed me. I felt like I was, uh, 
I was lifeless. There was nothing left for me uh, in this world. Um, I, I certainly couldn't do much. Um, you know, I, I, I thought every day about like my, my career, my family, how I was going to provide for them, how I was going to, you know, do 110% like I always like to do um, in, in my work. And uh, so, you know, I, uh, at that point, I just, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know what else to do. So, uh, you know, laying in bed each and every day was kind of my world. So do you think you can grab my, uh, at that point, is, is Anna available by I chance? Turn. I didn't know what else to uh, do. She's still uh, talking with some members right now. So okay, and we got to make sure that you know, hey, business is a business is priority there with your uh, yeah. with your members. So um, when you get a moment, when she breaks free, grab her, okay? Because sure. I want to ask her some about that. Now sure. there came, there came a time where um, your doctor's talking about fusion, right? Yeah. Uh, for for your spine, and you discovered something. You discovered something else. Describe that real briefly, how that, how that came about. Yeah, so I, um, I had heard a little bit about um, artificial disc replacement, just, you know, and a couple little things I was reading online and, you know, the T-lift or something like that was one of the things that I thought might have been an artificial disc replacement. So one of the surgeons I met with, you know, he said, fusion's your option, that's your only option. And I said, well, what about artificial disc replacement? And he said, there's no such thing. There's, there's no such thing as an artificial disc. So, and I said, <laughs> okay, well, amazing. you know, um, I'm going to go back and do my research. And he said, you know, certainly let us know if you find something, but uh, to our knowledge, there's nothing. And, and we're years before that'll ever happen. So I went home. I now, mean, Eric, where, now, Mike, when, when yeah. was that? How long ago was that? That was, um, oh, I'm going to say that was, let me think year and a half ago so <laughs> I, I i i i'm just don't even i just don't even understand so here we are um and and so we're in the united states and i've always thought that we had you know honestly the best medical care in pretty much everything and um here you've got your your doctor telling you no such thing as artificial disc replacement when it's being done it being done in the United States and it's been done around the world for 30 years. Uh, and to have a doctor say that, but I have to say, I, I recently asked a bunch of people who had gone through surgery, how many doctors they met with before they, before they decided to get disc replacement. And, um, and then how many of those doctors actually brought disc replacement up and the vast majority of their doctors, either a never brought disc replacement up or B when it was brought up, really poo-pooed it, um, even though they ultimately determined that that was going to be the best option for them. So, um, and for those, for those watching, if you're unfamiliar with disc replacement, it's, it works like this. Instead of a fusion where uh, they go in and they put uh, rigid rods and hardware that's designed to fuse one portion of your vertebrae to the next, um, instead, instead of fusion, what they do instead is um, remove your old disc and put it in an artificial disc. And in this case, you had the M6 disc, I think, Mike. That's right. Uh, which articulates uh, in all six ranges of motion, even in compression, a shock absorption feature. Um, but with increasing resistance as it gets to the ends of the range of motion, it, it, in fact, uh, almost perfectly mimicking the original disc. Uh, and so instead of fusion, which makes this portion of your spine rigid, which puts additional pressures above and below, and usually leads to more fusion um, of additional levels, uh, Mike chose to get disc replacement so that he could have normal motion and be able to return to an active, active lifestyle. So, right. um, so how'd you decide to go to Germany? So while well, I came back that day defeated uh, from the doctor, um, I remember Eric being home at that time too. And uh, I just started, I just started, looking, for, I started looking for uh artificial disc replacement and um it was a, actually a youtube video of al mccoy um who was a uh ritter lang patient he traveled from canada to uh, germany and uh i kind of he, he touched me with his story uh, it was quite an emotional story and um i started to stalk al a little bit on facebook 
<laughs> uh, sent, him a, sent him a message and um, he responded back, told me about the artificial disc replacement Facebook page. And I started following that, started asking a lot of questions to a lot of different um, either candidates, what their opinion was on it, and as well as uh, Ritter Lang patients. Um, and from there, that's when the process really started for me. I was really excited about it. I remember telling friends and family about it. Um, some people were very, very skeptical that I was going to go, you know, thousands of miles away to have something done. But um, at the end of the day, it was it was the best option for me, and that was the option I chose. So, Mike, um, the uh, by the way, if you're watching this live, uh, please in the chat go ahead and say hi and tell us where you're from uh, because we'd love to hear. We know that. When we do these, we typically get people from all over the place. This is the first time we've done the one on a Saturday. And so it's a kind of an experiment for that. But uh, say hi, let us know where you're from. Now, um, so uh, Mike, you, you researched, um, you know, I'm gathering this isn't something that you went lightly into. And ultimately, you chose to go to Germany with Ananda, Dr. Ritter Lang. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually have some uh, pictures I can bring up from this, if that's okay, and you can kind of talk us through some of them. So let me see how I can get those, um, how I can get those queued up. Okay, and then you'll have to tell me if it's actually it's actually working too. That's always good to know. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do this. All right. Well, should be seeing. Are you seeing pictures now? Yeah, I'm seeing pictures of the front uh, of the gym. I got got in the wrong. I got all, go. got all the way to the end. Darn it! Um, all right. So, are you seeing a big one? Big picture of an X-ray right now? Yeah. So that's that's me pre-surgery. That was the uh, first uh, MRI I received after months of begging for one. Um, and as you can see right there, nothing left. Almost bone on bone. Um, yeah. In fact. Not pretty yeah, I, I'm no doctor here, but I see the space above. It's got all sorts of room. Yeah. It's got some good room. And yeah. this one uh, has just almost nothing left. Um, it looks like it's also kind of flared out here, too. Yeah, a little bone, little bone spring going on there for sure. Okay, so, so, but, uh, so here's the x-ray. And I'm, I've got an after x-ray that we'll see in just a second. But yeah. um, this picture, tell us, tell, tell us briefly about this. That's Dana Gentry. Um, how it works with uh, the Anande group is once you send over your information, uh, like that x-ray you would have seen there, um, they do a full evaluation of you, see if you're a candidate. And once you are um, a candidate for artificial disc replacement, they assign you a case manager. And uh, Dana Gentry was my case manager. Uh, she was um, living in Charleston, South Carolina at the time. And um, so we got to talking. She gave me some information. And while we were talking, she said that she lived in Charleston, South Carolina. And it just so happened, as the stars aligned in the universe, um, I was actually taking a business trip to Charleston, South Carolina. And the hotel I was staying at was just up the road from where she worked. Huh. So we were actually able to meet face to face. Um, Dana is a 10 year, I believe, survivor of artificial disc replacement by Dr. Ritter Lang as well. So um, there was definitely some proof in the pudding by meeting her, hearing her story and actually seeing what uh, she went through in her life. So now, the it, pro now you sent your x-rays and stuff like that over to uh, Inanda for review by Dr. Ritter Lang, and then they connected you with, uh, with Dana, correct? That's right. Yeah. So I got I more or less got back saying that she was going to be my case manager, that I was pretty much accepted as a candidate for ADR. And then Dana reached out. Okay. And was she able to answer your questions and the, you um, know, that? Yeah, fully. Absolutely. She was, uh, <laughs> she, I, I think I made a, uh, this, this was a Facebook post that I put up and, you know, I said that, you know, Dana made uh, the, decision to have ADR in Germany, um, extremely easy for me. So um, with her knowledge behind it and, um, you know, her experience with the Anande team, um, it was, it was, I knew then and there that night that that was the decision I was going to make. I was going to move forward. 
Super cool. Now, of course, most people aren't going to get a chance to meet their case manager face to face, but it's great that you were able to. Um, but uh, I think in general, just knowing that there's a case manager assigned that can answer any questions and and all of Ananda's case managers have been through disk replacement themselves. Uh, right. So that's uh, I think that's a, a huge bonus. Um, right. And I, I saw this picture um, on Facebook. <laughs> And, uh, and um, I, I was intrigued. And uh, as I looked in closer, um, what I realized is you were reading this book. Uh, that's right. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm, sh I'm ashamed to say, but that's the first book I've ever um, had the opportunity to read cover to cover. Um, it, it pertained directly to me, my life, and my ability to move forward to where I am today. So um, I choked through it but it was actually a, a good read for me. It was something that uh, educated me on um, what to do and what not to do. So uh, the book's writ written by Dr. Ritter Lang, um, and he's the guy, the, the pro at it, that's, uh, that takes care of you once, once you're over there under the knife. So um, again, that was just another factor for me and a, 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 another way for me to make a decision that I was comfortable with. Uh, terrific. And I just tell everybody they can pick that up on Amazon um, if they uh, want to. Um, oh, I see we lost our slideshow there. Um, you pick that up on uh, on Amazon, I think, for, for, for real cheap. And honestly, there just aren't a lot of books out there on disk replacement. And so a uh, useful resource. Um, all right. So, so then, uh, so you got to Germany and uh, you sent me this picture. I thought this was the coolest. Uh, tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so that's the that's actually the artificial disc that's in my L4 L5 region right now. That's the M6 disc that uh, you know. While I was there, I said, "Is there any way that we could see this disc? Is there is there a way that I can have this thing literally in my hand so I can check it out, touch it, feel it before it actually goes in my body?" And um, they were kind enough to to bring one out, and we were all able to put it in our hand and and feel it and see what it was made out of and how robust it was and. Um, I'll tell you what, even those keels at the top of that, that uh, disc there, I mean, they're extremely sharp to the touch. And that's what really locks that thing into place from ever moving out of your spine. So it was a really cool experience to have that piece in your hand. That, uh, you know, I, I would think that would give you a great peace of mind. You know, you feel it, touch it, uh, all of that. And I know the surfaces of that are like micro braided and covered with some substance to help them fuse better. But it must have been neat to kind of feel that in person, just see it. Yeah, move it, it was uh, it was pretty awesome. I got to tell you, you know. All right. So uh, this is you. This is you going into surgery or coming out? This is you going in, huh? Yeah, that was me going in. Pretty excited, um, ready to go. Um, you know, weirdest thing, no nerves at all there. Um, I was ready. I just was ready to get up and start walking again. So they took good care of me over there. You know, they made me feel very comfortable and. Um, I was still very alert at that point. Um, and I'll tell you this, you know, if anybody has had surgery in the U S before, nothing really is every, ever timely here, but they were spot on when they said you're going to be in surgery at eight 30, you're in surgery at eight 30. I was really, um, pretty, uh, excited about how, you know, how organized they were, how on time they were with everything. There was no anxiety building up to it whatsoever. It was literally like I was just being wheeled into another room to watch some TV or something. It was a very comfortable setting. Uh, that's great. All right, let's see what else. Okay, so here's your before x-ray, and then you sent me this as your after x-ray. Yep. And so there's, uh, there's wow. the six installed, normal space back together. As you can see, all the disc material above um, look really, really good as well. So, um, yeah, so right. you know, with a fusion, you're, when you're fused, those uppers and lower discs um, stand the chance of, you know, taking the brunt where this M6 takes up all of that. So your upper and lower discs are, um, are saved. They're all the working the together the way they're designed to be, right? That's exactly right. Yep. All right. So now we're going to get to a little bit of fun, uh, fun, I think. So after, let me see, after surgery, they, tra uh, you recover in the hospital for a few days, right? Yep, and six. 
okay, six days in the hospital that, that they were there. Now that's interesting because you know, there, um, in the U.S., I don't think you'd get six days in the hospital. No, I think you get right. one or two, and that's it. Yeah. Um, well, heck, I, I hear now that there's there's actually a push for outpatient, uh, and they're experimenting with outpatient. Yeah, that's crazy. Can you imagine going doing doing that? No. Um, not so at all. tell us uh, tell us briefly uh, what this is after your six days in the hospital. Yeah. Right? So uh, once you're released from the hospital, Stem Stenham Hospital you go here to the uh, beautiful five-star park hotel with everything you could ever possibly imagine um, right down to the cigar bar that my brother um, absolutely loved. So I think that's really only reason he went to Germany with me in the first place is that he heard there was a cigar bar there. So um, uh, let's get him on here, Eric, uh, why don't you unmute yourself there? there. All right. So, cause, hey. uh, cause I've got this, uh, I've got this picture. Um, so, um, one of the cool things, right, is that your whole package, uh, Mike, was like an all-inclusive kind of thing, right? Yeah, so, that's right. Um, so you and and that included a companion. That's right. And yeah. so Anna came first for a few days, right? <clears throat> and then and then uh, and then and then Eric, Eric, tell us uh, tell us about the experience. Uh, you being in Germany uh, with your brother for for surgery. I mean, was it a, a traumatic time for you? You know, it was, um, it, it was, it was, I was nervous. Um, when Michael had said he was going to go to Germany, um, before he could even ask me if I would come to be on his care team at the end, I asked what the dates were and that I would, I would be there. There was no question in my mind. Um, uh, to see the state that he was in uh, was devastating for me. And um, I couldn't, couldn't even think about having him halfway across the world and not be able to be there. So um, I was there when he came out of surgery. Um, I moved him into the Park Hotel and immediately uh, followed all the orders that were given to me by the team there, um, which is making sure he walks, making sure he stays active, helping him um, uh, initially with uh, getting his socks on and, and getting dressed and uh, even even giving him a shot every single day was uh, something I did without, without question. And um, it was amazing to see my brother, because I, I had just been in upstate New York before he, he went. And then um, night and day, it seemed like to me, when we got back to the Park Hotel, uh, we walked, I think, Mikey for about one mile, uh, one and a half miles the, the first day. Yep. And... The second day when he had physical therapy to, to watch him move the way he was moving after seeing him basically crawling around the house, um, sometimes not even getting out of bed, was so inspiring. I mean, uh, I have always said I'll go to the ends of the earth with my brother, and I, without hesitation, did, um, and was happy to be a part of it. You know, the Germans might be offended if you told them that the uh, theirs is the end of the earth. Well, you know, but I, okay, <laughs> I didn't go to the end. I went like one quarter of the way around, but you know, Germany is a beautiful country. It was wonderful. So speaking of the ends of the earth, I would just want to point out, we've got people here from the U S um, uh, Kyle is in Buffalo. Uh, Jim is in California. Uh, another Jim, Jim Webster from, is from Colorado. Debbie uh, Wilson, uh, uh, Debbie Wilson McCoy, who has helped start the ADR Facebook group, actually is there from Canada. Um, Betty from New York, Steve from Orange County, Kenneth from PA, uh, from Pennsylvania. Uh, Monique is watching it from Sydney, Australia, awesome. uh, and so this is this is great. I love it. And by the way, if you're watching this and you are watching it on the recording say hi too, because it really helps us to know who's watching this from where. Um, and, and also ask your questions if you're live, but also if you're watching this recorded, ask your questions as well, because we'll do our best to get them, to get them answered. So well, I would say though too, because Debbie's on, you know, that first off I want to say hi Debbie and even though we've never met that we absolutely love you. Um, and you know, for, for your son, for your family, you know, and what you've definitely done for me um, has been outstanding. Without without Debbie's son, I would have never found ADR. So Al and Debbie went together to Germany, right? Uh, Debbie, you were uh, Al's uh, companion uh, uh, for that trip. And by the way, I met Al before and after his surgery, and before watching him walk was pain was it was painful to watch because he was hunched over and he could 
it, it just walking was a super challenge for him. And now I see him out, you know, out building a play structure with his kids and cutting wood and riding quads and, and stuff like that. But Al and Debbie, thank you. You guys really have been an inspiration to a ton of people, uh, you know. So, um, Eric, you uh, you guys in you guys had some fun in Germany, yeah. uh, from what I could tell. In fact, I'll go back to some pictures here um, because it looked like you just it didn't look like you were um, really having uh, it didn't look like you were struggling at all. Uh, so <laughs> let, me, uh, let me see how the pictures are are, are coming here. Hang on. Are pictures showing or is it still uh, me on camera? That's a blue screen. It's a blue screen. I tell you. How about now? Black screen. Black screen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to experiment with technology. So we're going to try that once again and go to, oh, there we go. That's the way to do it. All right. How about now? There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I saw pictures of you guys um, drinking some beer. Right. Um, it looked to me like you did some walking together. A yeah. lot of walking. That was like maybe the seventh or eighth day out of surgery where, where the beers and the walking around. That's so, right. yeah. All right. So you transferred to the beautiful park hotel. It's surrounded by that uh, largest private park in Europe or something like that, or largest. Now, there was some maybe public park i'm not sure but huge this huge park um and um it it, it looks like you're just having a really rough time uh, i'm still smoking that box mikey i'm still smoking through those <laughs> <laughs> so hey, Eric, is... go back one yeah so i just want to shout out to my brother there you know since that eric has lost 60 pounds wow yeah so, wow shout out the big brother there that's awesome, Eric. Congratulations. Uh, Michael's an inspiration. So, I, Now, I interviewed you guys. I remember I was here in California. I interviewed you guys the same way from that hotel. And at that time, Eric said he was the smarter, better looking brother. And, uh, and I remember, Mike, you said that that's, up, that's perhaps debatable. But, you know, minus 60 pounds, Eric, I, I think, dude, I think you've got it. I think but I. I I cut my hair just like his to compete, so it's a it's a better comparison. Good. All right, so I'm going to come back uh, because I want to get into this now. Uh, Mike, you were doing weightlifting, and when did you start? Tell us a bit about your recovery, about the process that's got you to where you are today, because I think that's one of the reasons interviewing you is, is here you are. You're 10 months after surgery, and people want to know how you got here and how you're doing. Yeah, so. Um... After getting back from uh, Germany, hitting U.S. soil, I think that was, um, I want to say that was May 10th, we landed back okay. in Newark. And that was, so 16 days after surgery, I hadn't touched any painkillers, no opioid whatsoever, once I uh, hit U.S. soil. So I've been, I've been pain-free um, I would say 80% pain-free since we landed back in the U.S. So um, once we got back here, um, I took just a couple of days just doing some walking around and such. Um, I actually had a physical therapist right across the street from my house um, that I was able to just walk to um, every day and just do stuff there. And um, I think it was, I don't know, it might have been after my fifth time there, um, they already had me doing weights. So I wasn't, I wasn't nearly even um, two months out of surgery and I was already picking up weights and doing push-ups and um, doing some planks and things like that. So it was really impressed and um, they were even blown away. They, you know, I remember speaking with the owner there and he was shocked that um, someone like me who had just been abroad and had a major surgery, um, even though it's only 50 minutes to have an L4, L5 done, it's still a major surgery. And uh, he was really impressed just by the fact that I was up moving around. And I remember them commenting so many times, like I was real easy to deal with because I was just motivated and able to move around by myself. So, you know, people with fusion are still coming in there in walkers and wheelchairs several months later, still trying to get back on their feet, you know, after they've already been, you know, bedridden. So, um, yeah. so yeah, so after that, um, 
once I, uh, I probably went to physical therapy maybe only three weeks or so. Um, and then I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good to go. So um, I actually um, had a pool table in my basement. I got rid of that and put a gym in my basement. And that's when I was working out. And I think I, I would send some stuff to like the Facebook page and whatnot. I'd be working out just as, you know, as an inspiration to, you know, people that are looking for it or people that are um, getting back on their feet um, from ADR. And um, so I was doing a lot of working out from home and then um, also hitting the local gym. And so I would say probably within my fourth or fifth month out of surgery, I was back into the weights, the hardcore weights of, um, you know, pushing up some, some serious weight and, and kind of settling back into where I used to be prior to getting injured. You know, on that subject, Monique uh, asked you a question, um, and she asked, did you lose much muscle or core strength prior to surgery? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, yeah, it was, it was bad. Um, I put on weight. I definitely lost a lot of strength. Um, the abs became non-existent, you know, so I was, uh, I was certainly um, binge eating just based on depression. So, um, but I'll say – once I uh, got back on my feet, muscle memory is a beautiful thing, and uh, it came back really, really fast. So I'm back. I'm back to the weights I was at prior to my injury. Okay, so um, is this the time for me to share that video you sent me? Sure, absolutely. Right. So um, uh, Mike, Mike, I, I, I asked Mike for pictures or video or whatever of what life is like, um, and so he sent me. He sent me this. Let me see if I can uh, get it to work properly. So um, I thought, what, what this is. And let's have to find the right thing. Here we go. I'm going to show the computer sound and optimize. Actually, I'm going to do it without the sound. And uh, even though you got funky music going to it, uh, but that way we can talk through it. Okay. Sure. So, um, are you seeing a video now, or at least a still picture? A still picture. All right, let's run the video. <laughs> okay, so when did you film this? This is last week? This was literally um, Thursday night, around 11 o'clock at night. Okay. And this so, Thursday. So, so this is uh, actually less than 10 months following your lumbar surgery, right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So doing some front leg lifts and KTEs knee to ear. Um, just so you know that th those pull-ups were, I did a lot more of those pull-ups. I don't know why the video cut short there, but uh, <laughs> I can do more free pull-ups just so everybody knows. How many? Look at that. I'm running. I'm running. Yeah. I mean, that, that was unheard of. Yeah, a year ago, no way, right? Yep. Yeah. So um, I'm going to skip a little bit here. I think I am. There we go. Some then, 45 pound plates. Yeah, there was uh, something you were doing in the back here. This. Yeah, those are sissy squats. Yeah, you've got your toes anchored underneath something, right? And doing that. That's a, that's a sissy squat piece. Yeah. Okay. There's there's squats, bars across my back. Now uh, that's uh, that's terrific. Um, it's it's inspiring, honestly. And I remember you posted something to the Facebook doing workouts a few months after surgery. And I remember right, some people on Facebook gave you some grief over that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they're like, "What are you doing? Are you crazy?" You know, um, uh, that type of thing. So, um, I want to come to well. So, so Mike, physically, where you are now compared to where you were before you were hurt, how do they stack up? I feel honestly, I feel like I'm back, like I never even had a surgery. Um, you know, you, you know, we all. Any surgery you have, you're always going to have some days where you know you've overdone it. But, you know, you can have days without surgery where you know you've overdone it. And I, I push myself to the limit, I think. Um, I, I don't know when to sit down and when to stop. And, uh, you know, 
if if anybody's put this M6 to the test, and not just to toot my own horn here, it's been me. I've I've really put this thing through um, the test, and it's it's holding up very 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 well. The key is um, to stretch and and find a great massage therapist. Get massages often. You know, keep things loosened up because um, you know it is a it is a pretty extensive surgery, and um, you know your body needs time to heal, and you need to help along with that. So. Okay, on that topic, uh, Steve Ocaltree, who had ADR in Germany as well, um, said, is there anything that you should avoid in the workout routine as a result of the surgery? Um, I mean, I would, I would, I avoid deadlifts. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a big deadlifter anymore um, since my surgery. I still do them, but I do it with dumbbells and light weight. And, you know, just to keep the back, the lower back strengthened. Um, but as far as that goes, it's just deadlifts. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to put strain on my lower back. I'm just, there's no sense in it. You don't need to, you know, a lot of, a lot of people out there put some serious weight up and, you know, you're putting a lot of pressure on that lower back and things are going to give away as we get older. So, um, just stay away from the deadlifts. And I think it's, that's important that people recognize that, if you have disc replacement, yes, one disc is bionic, so to speak, but the rest of your discs are not. No. Um, and I had a, I, I heard a great analogy from a surgeon who said, you know, you have to remember, it's like, it's like you've got a car with four wheels, and if one wheel goes bad and you replace that wheel, you still got three other wheels that have, the, you know, have all the mileage on them. Yeah. And, uh, so that, that is important, uh, I think, to remember. Uh, uh, so a couple, some other questions here, which is great. Oh, and I just want to say hi to Melanie Kuna. Uh, yeah. Melanie's online. You guys want to say hi to her? Yes, we love Melanie. She's awesome. Melanie, how are you? <laughs> I love your Facebook posts. <laughs> we do. <laughs> That's true. How was so, Disneyland? Big question. <laughs> so Melanie, for those who don't know, is uh, the on-site patient case manager uh, at Stenham Hospital. And she is the one who helps make like the well-oiled machine work uh, there um, at the hospital. And so Mike, you, you, Mike and Eric, you guys got to spend some significant uh, time with her. And it's so great that she jumps in on the- uh, She's yeah. an angel. I, could, I couldn't get mean. enough hugs. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't get enough hugs from Melanie. Even no. you know, when, when, when Michael was having some really rough times, I mean, uh, you know, there, there's some pain initially after surgery. and. Melanie was there just, she's a great coach. She's a, she's a great inspiration. She's seen so many people go through it. And so she was able just to reassure this is completely normal. You're doing fine. Um, and always seemed to put Michael at ease. Yep, absolutely. That's great. We love you, Melanie. She is, sure she, do. She is a special person with special gifts. On that, on that subject, Mike, um, you know, tell us a bit about, re about the recovery just because I know that you know, we've seen all kinds, right? We, we, we've, we've seen people who seem to just spring up and run out the door practically. Um, I remember one guy that they actually had uh, that I interviewed, super great guy. He, he wanted to do laps around the hospital like the day after surgery. And they're like, or maybe it was two days, but they're like, no, no, no. And, um, you know, and then others have a harder time with it, right, Mike? So mm -hmm. what's your perspective? Well, yeah, you know, I think if when you're when you're considering artificial disc replacement, um, key is is to prepare for that. Start dieting, get some weight off, um, do as much as you possibly can, walk as much as you can. Even though it does hurt, um, you have to remember that either you've got a collapsed disc or you're missing um, artificial disc or a, a disc material, or it's or you're compensating on one side of your body. So once you go in for artificial disc replacement, your body does grow some. And I think I grew about five eighths of an inch. So you're going to have to distraction pain behind that. So getting weight off, getting yourself body conditioned the best you possibly can. Um, that is key. And I think I, I know who you're talking about, um, Everett, as far as who, who went in there and he wanted to run around. He wanted to get on a bicycle. He wanted to do all sorts of crazy stuff. And, and I talked to him as well. Um, that guy he's an inspiration to me. Um, he was, he was, he got back into the States and was doing stuff that I'm like, man, if this, if this guy can do it, I can do it. 
Um, so, but he was very well conditioned. They went on a diet plan. They, they stayed very active as much as he possibly could. And that helped him tremendously, he said. So that's the best advice I could give somebody going into a surgery like this. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really uh, excellent advice. Um, and by the way, Melanie said, OMG, you guys, you're so wonderful. And Disneyland was great. Happy face. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Paul just asked, Mike, you says, congrats on the recovery and thanks for sharing your story. Did you have any residual pain in the facets or any nerve pain following the surgery? Um, I, I would say maybe facet joint, um, but I, I really don't know if it was facet joint or not. Um, I just felt tightness, you know, definitely like something was, was pulling, you know, there was definitely some, some tendons some muscle pulling. Again, like I said, you do, you do grow with one replacement. I can't imagine the people that have three, four, five levels under, you know, the care of Ritter Lang and, and their distraction pain. So, um, yeah, let me again. touch on that real quick. So this term distraction pain was befuddling to me. Um, but, uh, before I kind of learned more about it and basically you think of Mike's situation where his discs were compressed to the point where they were, he was almost bone on bone, whereas natural disc height might've been, you know, this much. Uh, and so he went from here with no, you know, with his artificial or with his original disc, you know, to here with the artificial disc. So his body had gotten used to the lower disc height. And so his tendons, muscles, et cetera, had to adjust to, to that new height. Now my brother-in-law went and he, here in the States, he was gonna have four level fusion, lumbar fusion. And uh, he went there and instead he got three artificial discs in. He grew, I think about an inch and a half. Uh, or, and, and, and I shouldn't even say grow an inch and a half. It's like an inch and a half was restored to him. Um, but the distraction pain is those muscles and tendons and those things having to adjust to this new height. And for him, stretching was a really big deal. And it still is. In fact, Monique had asked about stretching, you know, um, and for him, um, he can do everything. We, we play water polo together. We water ski, we snow ski, uh, kneeboard, uh, sledding, uh, basketball, all sorts of things that he does. And back to work, which is on his feet most of the day. But at the end of the day, he gets a little tired um, and he has some pain. Um, but it's a it's an aching, he says. And it's and and as long as he keep, does stretching and core exercises, he finds it's completely manageable. And uh, it's a huge success compared to the year he spent living on the floor, eating his meals on the floor, sleeping on the floor, um, interacting with his family, literally on the floor. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, that's a little bit of perspective on those people who have multi-level. Um, so, Mike, how about now? I mean, you I mean, you feel some pain uh, here and there, and you need to. Do I I only I do when I overdo it, you know. I but I tend to overdo it. So, it, but it's not it's not it's not a really bad pain. It's I literally go in and I see Jen Backus at the local uh, place here to get my massages done, and she's amazing and gets me right back in the shape real quick and. I'm back in the gym before you know it. So um, massages always t seem to help. Every time I feel like I've overdone it, my body tells me going for a massage. I'm right back at it the very next day. So, Okay. Uh, I, and Vahid, uh, Vahid asked a question. And if I mispronounce your name, please forgive me. He says, great to hear your story. My, my, my wife may have to perform three in her, both her neck and back. How difficult was it traveling back home after the procedure? I was just asked this by um, a member here just a few minutes ago because he showed up and, oh, there's Anna. Oh, there's Anna. So, um, Anna, stay close. I'm going to ask you some questions in a second. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, he said to me, he said, how was it, how was it tra traveling over there? And I said, traveling over there was not easy. Um, it was not pleasant for me or anybody on the plane. Um, I would say if you can if, if you can manage to fly first class and get as much space as you possibly can, that's key. On the way back, it was a great flight. I had fun. Um, we had beverages. Eric and I had plenty of beverages. And uh, talking about Gatorade, right? Yeah, Gatorade. Beverages. Uh, totally Gatorade. Yeah. 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 So, but no, the flight back was good. I I was great. 
Um, and then, you know what? We, so we flew home from Germany. We landed in Newark, New Jersey, jumped in a car, and then I drove two and a half hours home. Nice. So if that, if that tells you anything. So wow. it, it was a pleasant experience coming home, not so pleasant going over. So I'm going to, I want to share some perspective from other people I've uh, interviewed about this because um, everybody's body is different and they'll handle things different. I know my brother-in-law was, um, he decided to invest in business class tickets coming back so, um, so that he could recline fully. And by the way, business class in one airline and even on certain flights is not always the same. So find one, if you're looking for one to recline, make sure that that's what business class really is on that flight. Now his flight wasn't from Germany to New York, it was from Germany to California. Um, so a little bit of a different animal, but, uh, but he didn't have to do the, you know, the gazillion, gazillion hours of driving after, uh, after either. But I will say for a lot of people, if you can invest in business class coming home, I think it's well worth it. Also highly recommend, this is the, you know, yeah, I granted many of us are like, no, we're self-sufficient. We don't want anyone to help us. And, you know, we don't want to feel like we're disabled in any way. But this is a really good time to go ahead and get wheelchair service, both going going there and coming, mainly because they'll also help handle your luggage um, and help you with your connections. Take advantage of, uh, of that of that type of thing. And then, uh, Anna, before I, before I come to you on a question real quick, uh, Bahid, one thing also, you mentioned your wife may need to have both neck and, uh, and lumbar done. Um, Art Beverly, who's in, uh, who I interviewed, who also went to Ananda and Dr. Ritter Lang, ended up having two lumbar and three cervical on the same day. Um, and his total surgery time was very reasonable. Um, and he went back to doing motocross. Um, and uh, happy to connect you at some point, uh, if you like. Okay, uh, Mike and Anna, let's come to you guys. Um, Anna, tell us, tell us a little bit, what's this experience been like for you? Because everybody concentrates on the, on the person with the back pain, but I often think that the spouse has it harder. So tell us about your, give us this from your perspective. Um, so when Mike first got injured, um, you know, I didn't really understand the extent of the pain that he was in. And that for me was difficult because I was like, well, what do you mean you don't want to go to dinner because your back hurts? Or what do you mean you don't want to go out with friends? Or what do you mean you can't go to a, a play or a cheerleading competition? And I would be lying to say that I didn't get mad because I, I just, I didn't understand the extent of it. I was kind of like, suck it up. You're fine. You're fine. And then, you know, I, I knew he wasn't because I knew my husband, I knew the type of person and father that he was. And those were things that he would normally never miss. So then he had a lot of time in bed and he was doing a lot of research and he came to me and he was like, I want to talk to you about this artificial disc. And I was like, okay. And he's telling me about it. And I was like, oh boy, like, I, I don't know. I'm like going to Germany. That's so crazy. It's going to be so expensive. How are we going to ever afford this? And he just kept like hammering it home to me and telling me all the benefits. And then, you know, I watched the, um, the, the YouTube video of Al McCoy and I said, you know what, if it, if it'll get you to stop talking to me about it, just send your information over there. This will appease you temporarily. We'll find out how much it is. There's no way we're going to be able to afford it. So we'll have to go from there. And then we got this insanely comprehensive review back. We talked to Dana. She put our mind at ease. We found out that what we were expecting from a U.S. cost perspective versus what they were gonna charge us over there was not even in the same realm of financial responsibility. And I was like, if Eric will go, we'll do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <laughs> so, um, and I mean, once we got over there, the best part for me was having, you know, other companions there with me going through the same thing. And of course I have, I was, 
lucky enough to have Eric there with me too. And, um, but it was, the experience over there was amazing. I'm I actually am dying to go back. <laughs> now you just, you just touched on something that a lot of people may not understand or recognize is so when you guys arrived, one of the first things that happened, right, is that you were introduced to other patients from North America yeah. that, that were going to have surgery as well, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they're our lifelong friends. Say that again? They are our lifelong friends. Like, we keep in contact with them. We know how they're doing. You know, we see pictures of their grandkids and you know, today Peter posted he had two levels done. He was out snowmobiling with his kids and his grandkids today. You know, he felt his left leg for the first time in 30 years with us in the room with him. Like, it, to be able to experience that with them was amazing, you know? And um, the guys that were in the room together, <laughs> they saw sides of each other <laughs> that I don't even think their wives have seen. <laughs> But they had each other all the time, you know? So it, it was really, it's such a different medical experience than anything you would ever experience in the U.S. And it made all the difference in the world. And then you got there and you had Melanie. And I was like, oh, Melanie, I literally want to hug her every day for the rest of my life because she's just sweet as pie. And, you know, we're friends on Facebook now. And so I watch her and she just went to Disney and it's just so great. You're lifelong friends with these people. I think that shared experience is invaluable. Mm -hmm. I think of, you know, would you have, would you have had the opportunity to connect with other patients? Had you done your surgery here? No, no. you would never. <laughs> Out. Like they wall you off, right? It's like, no, there, yeah. there might be someone over there, but don't talk to them, you know, yeah. privacy or whatever. And you don't get to have that interaction. Yeah. HIPAA goes out the window <laughs> at Stenham Hospital. In the right way. You know, everything about everything that's going on with everyone in that room, stuff you don't want to know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of that is patients communicating with patients. Oh, yes. That's exactly Absolutely. what I was, I was going to mention that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the nurses aren't telling us what's going on down the hall. Over there. No, no, no. <laughs> um, what I, I think that that whole, you know, that support mechanism is huge. I, I remember talking with Carrie Limebeer from Canada. So Carrie had his surgery at the same time as uh, uh Mike and, and uh, uh, Mike Schatz and, and Al McCoy, they all had surgery at the same time. Carrie and Mike, uh, um, they're, they're, they're uh, wives and they all connected and they go do a vacation together every year now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's, it's incredible because, you know, nobody ex understands it's quite like someone who's gone through with you. Um, so a couple other comments here coming in the chat log, which is super great. Steve said he spoke to Brian, who was his roommate from Saskatchewan just yesterday. Um, cool. And um, uh, Melanie uh, had said, uh, oh, she said, hey, what, ba what basic exercises? I think this is appropriate. So uh, you've opened your own gym, and I want to talk about that in just a second. Melanie's asking, what basic exercise do you recommend for post-ADR patients since you're the pro at exercise and have your own gym? Well, you know, first off, uh, lots and lots and lots of walking um, is key. Walking is your best um, resource of healing once you uh, get back from your ADR. And I did a lot of that. Um, I did that for, for, for several weeks. Um, certainly, um, stretching is is key as well. Starting to strengthen that core and lower back as, as time allows and, and you feel comfortable doing those things because you have to have a strong core to support a strong back. So those are, those are some of the bigger um, exercises you want to do, such as crunches and, and sit-ups. And, and when you're over in Germany um, and you get to the park hotel, you do have a physical therapist that um, you work with. So the nice thing is, even if whether you're whether you know what you're doing and you know how to read your body, or you have no clue, he walks you through everything. He takes very very good care of you. He sends you home with a whole regimen of workouts that you should be doing 
on your own. And then he also sends you some information that you should give to your physical therapist once you get back in your, in your country, um, as far as what they hand them and what they would um, expect from you in your physical therapy appointments. So that's already laid out for you. So um, you, it takes all the guessing out of it. Ananda sends you home with that material and, and gets you comfortable. So, but you know, I'm a big believer in personal trainers. My brother will tell you who just lost 60 pounds. You know, I'm, I don't live up the road from him. So um, even he's 3000 miles away, he got a personal trainer and, and they'll work with you, you know? So I would say if, if you're not comfortable and you don't know how to read your body, you have to find somebody that can help you get through your exercises. Because if you don't, and, and you're just going to go home thinking that you're going to heal quickly on your own, you have to stay active. You have to keep moving. Um, you have to have your massages, your stretching, you know, and, and your walk, your daily walks, and then work your way into, um, you know, different uh, workout habits. So, and you will, and you will see a huge improvement. And that's exactly what I did. I, I think if I was to just come home and just take it with a grain of salt, like, Hey, I had surgery and I'll, I'll get back to it eventually. No, you have to get right back into it. Start getting into your daily routines and, you know, mowing your lawn and enjoying life because that's what it's all about. We don't go for 80 hour surgery to get our backs um, healed and well again, just to kind of sit around. So you want to keep moving. That's great advice all around. Um, so uh, Tariq asked, can you talk about the cost? And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that real briefly. Um, of course, the cost is going to vary from wherever you have it done. Um, but uh, going through Ananda and the surgical team there with Dr. Ritter Lang, Dr. Spiller, uh, single level lumbar is 28,000 dollar 28,000 euros, and additional levels I think are 4,000 euros more. And it's funny I compare that to what it would cost uh, to have. And, and, by, and by the way, that's all inclusive of hotels before. Uh, hospital stay, you know, five to seven, eight days, whatever's necessary in the hospital. Um, the uh, time at the Park Hotel. How many days were you at the Park Hotel, Mike? Uh, I believe 10, 10 days. Okay. Uh, so all of that was covered. Uh, uh, the morning meals uh, are covered and, uh, and huge. The spread at the Park Hotel was, <laughs> I can't believe that, uh, that breakfast. Yeah. And quite honestly, I think most people um, stretch that to cover lunch as well. That's uh, what we did. Yep. So, yeah. so, uh, and that lodging and everything is for you and a companion. So, and, and we, you don't have to bring a companion, but really highly recommend that, that you do. Um, Mike ha had it kind of the best of both worlds, perhaps. Uh, Anna came uh, at the beginning for part, and then Eric came for part. And so they have this like, uh, kind of a family vacation uh, practically. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that cost includes everything, everything except really you got to get pay for your dinner meals and you got to cover your airfare. Um, I yep. think, yeah, did I get it right, Mike? Is that, yeah. my, you know, is that like, all right? They send us amount of blood work on you over there. Um, they do, I don't know, I think two different sets of x-rays they do on you while you're there. Um, just all the, the pre and post-op stuff, it's all in that price. So, as were your massages every day. Yeah. Eric! Oh my <laughs> God! You're so skinny! Oh, she hasn't seen him since. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> now, uh, that's right. So the physical therapy, the, uh, all, all of that um, were, uh, included as well. For, and, and I know I've got pictures of you getting a massage, but we'll skip those. It didn't, it didn't pull up right for some reason. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, Anna just brought up a good point too. If, if for some reason there was say a complication or something like that as well, I mean, you if, if you have to be there for an extended stay, um, you know, they take good care of you. It's, you know, they, they compensate for, for anything, you know, as far as um, if, if there was a, a slight complication or something like that. So, it was typically, I mean, the, the success rate is, I think, 97%, isn't it, Everett, as far as it's, the surgery it's, goes? So, it's, it's extremely high. And um, it was funny on the money side, because Tariq, we, I totally understand. Um, I know that when my brother in law went, 
he, you know, uh, got some help from people at church. He, uh, his parents um, loaned him money and, you know, became a, you know, real thing to raise that money and go. I know others who have said, look, I could buy a new truck um, or I could get my, my life restored. Which one do I want to do? Um, one of the great one, great um, perspectives uh, was from uh, Ralph in our um, Facebook group. He said, he said, he added up all of his expenses and the money he spent on his spine. And he figured he spent easily over a hundred thousand dollars of his own money on his back so far. And he realized, you know, and that was physical, physical therapy, medications, massage, uh, alternative treatments. He figured all the, you know, the time he lost from work, the overtime he had to pass up when he could work. Um, all of those things were crazy. Uh, he said financially it was the biggest no-brainer. Whether he had the money or not, it was the biggest no-brainer because now he's able to go back and earn money um, sure. and, um, and, and have life restored. So uh, It's Ralph's birthday today, too. So if he's watching, happy birthday, Ralph. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, no. my gosh. All right. We're, I'm, thank you for telling me that. I'm going to um, I'm gonna have to go wish him a happy birthday as well. I've already met the guy. It's just part of this, you know, it's part of this family that, you know, you, uh, even though you haven't met so many hundreds of people, you've all been through the same thing and friends for life, even though you haven't met them. Yeah, so. a super guy. Super guy loves to help others and contribute to them. It sure does. Uh, yeah. That's what we've really seen uh, a lot of. Hey, Anna, um, I wanted to ask you, what's life like now compared to a year ago? Um, it's great. I mean... We're doing things again. We're going on vacation again. And they're enjoyable. You know, we don't have to worry about only being gone for so long because Mike has to lay down. Or, you know, like I can go out with my girlfriends and not have to worry, you know, that he's stuck at home and feel bad. Or, you know, he's was throwing the kids in the pool this summer. And it's back to how it was, you know, before everything happened. And he's happier and he's back in the gym and he's working out and you know this came because of that so tell us about tell us about this tell us about my home gym because this is super cool so my home gym came from our insurance reimbursement <laughs> i mean <laughs> it, it, it did yeah let's talk about that okay so, so let's, let's talk about the insurance reimbursement and then let's talk about the gym. That's important. Uh, tell us. Yeah. So um, we found out maybe like three or four days into our trip overseas that we could potentially have the opportunity to get some kind of insurance reimbursement. And we didn't know what that meant for us. We didn't know whether that was like $500 or $5,000. We didn't know what it meant. But as soon as I got home, we started doing some investigation. And I called um, Blue Cross Blue Shields International Portion, which is Global Core. And I spoke with a lady over there and she said, yes, it's covered. So I filled out a form. I sent Mike's letter that Dr. Ritter Lang had his initial, um, what's it called? Consultation. Yeah, yeah consultation right. letter. Yeah, his, ne his necessity letter. And I sent a copy of our invoice and then a copy of what we wire transferred over and within 45 days of everything but i think two thousand dollars was direct deposited back into our account so so you guys went fully expecting you were going to be paying for this completely out of pocket and, and that was with us yeah. and deciding that that was completely worth it yeah right yeah. and then and then found out oh wait you know what blue cross blue shield may reimburse and Here's, here's what we found for anybody who's talking, thinking about the financing and their insurance is it seems to me the secret has been exploring their international reimbursement policy, right? That's been, that's been the secret to success. And um, a lot of people in that on the Facebook group and the Ananda page have made reference to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, go ahead, continue on. Sorry, interrupt. I called there like weekly. I talked to Maria, she's wonderful every week and i was like hey just checking the status just checking the status they had thought they didn't get some paperwork at one point so there was a little bit of a holdup, but really it wasn't it, it was a very easy process and 
anyone who needs help with it or whatever. I mean, definitely, I know either of us would be willing to kind of walk you through the steps that we took and, you know, show you where that claim form is and get you the secret phone number that is nowhere. Um, and I could probably even post that to the Facebook page as well. So people have that, but. Yeah, we just had somebody ask us some questions the other day. Somebody had emailed me, I believe, um, and then um, had some questions, and we were able to, I hopefully, help her out yeah. with um, her claim form as well. So, um, you know, we're, we're able to pass along with that. So Because yeah, we have people help us. Yeah. So. As, far as, the, as far as the gym goes, I mean, like Anna said, we wouldn't have been able to, to do it. This has always been a dream of mine to own my own club and you know have a 24-hour fitness center we live in a very small community um of of people that just you know they need a cool place to hang out and work out um you know i've been around the uh, the fitness business for a while now so um we certainly had some some backing and some following um so um with that insurance money we were able to open up this club um 100 out of pocket um no loans, no nothing. And now we're a full fledged 24 hour fitness center that opened up uh, January 6th. So and we're doing very well. The, the club is doing great. January 6th, you guys open this thing up and uh, flip your camera around. Just give us a, give us a, uh, give us a 360 of what you've got going here. Tell, sure. us, tell us a little bit about what you've opened and, and as much as you want to share about your early success. Okay, so um, pretty much we have a uh, full line of cardio. We have about a 15-piece circuit or so. I'll show you some of it as far as our cardio is concerned. It's a little quiet in here right now. It is an afternoon on a, uh, on a Saturday. So we have, our, uh, we have our local pastor here from our church as well. So he's here hanging out right now. This is so cool. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. You've been yeah. open, and you've been open all of a month, right? What's that, buddy? You've been open all of a month, right? Yeah, all of a month. So how are we doing? Facility. How's membership doing? Membership is um, incredible. We're we've um, we've exceeded my expectation as far as membership goes. So um, you know, I was. I was hoping for maybe 150 members um, within our second or third month, but um, we're well over that, only being open for about a month. So, pretty happy with those with those numbers. So, this is our uh, this is our free weight room. This is where all our plate loaded equipment is. Um, this is where all the the big lifters kind of go. But we're trying to get people to come out here a little bit more um, and and utilize this, not feel so intimidated by the equipment. Out here in the front, we have um, a full full body circuit, Cybex VR2 stuff wow. that um, pretty much just gives you a full body workout um, from anything from shoulders to chest to arms, back, legs, abs, um, you name it. Now, we have uh, uh, dumb, dumbbells that go all the way up to uh, 100 pounds currently, and we're waiting on the 110, 120s to come in. We have a uh, we have locker rooms, full fledged locker rooms with uh, showers through here. Beautiful locker rooms. So we're real happy with our with our club here. Uh, as well, you should be. You should be super super proud of it. By the way, I want to say hi to a friend of mine, Trish, who joined uh, Trish Bartel. And then uh, guess what? Dana is on the call. Uh, has joined us, uh, watching it as well. Awesome. Uh, so Dana, we, uh, Mike, Mike was dragging you up big time earlier. So you'll have to go back and watch the, watch the, the, the replay of it. Um, now there, uh, a great question came in. So Tariq asked, he said, Hey, I've had two discectomies in the past five years. I'm still mm -hmm. in pain and totally refusing fusion. Is ADR still an option for me? Um, yes. So, yeah, go ahead. I'll let you answer that one, and I'll throw my two cents in. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it all comes down to your evaluation that Dr. Ritter Lang gives to you 100% free. You just got to have your, um, your uh, MRI sent over to him. He will take a, a good hard look at it. Um, you know, I do know of some people that have had two or even three um, 
laminectomy or disectomies, and they've still been a candidate for um, ADR. There's also been some people that have, um, have needed fusion, but they've also been able to receive a fusion by Ritter Lang with a hybrid, I think they call it a 360, where they put an artificial disc either above or below an affected area to, to help with that, um, that level below or above that could potentially um, blow out because of a fusion. So um, I've heard all sorts of stories um, from people that have wondered. I even wondered with a, just a one level, um, a one surgery laminectomy that maybe I wasn't a candidate. And I, I stressed about that. Mm -hmm. and, and Ritter Lang came back and said, you're definitely a candidate. My facet joints look good. Everything looked really, really good. Um, and away we went. Yeah, and in fact, uh, Tariq, I'll tell you that I think the majority of people who get this replacement have already had um, a discectomy. Um, it, it, uh, a, a high number of people who go to Germany to get this done have had prior back surgery. And the reason is, in fact, Mike, you alluded to it um, today. You alluded to it when I first interviewed you from um, uh, a week after surgery, is that you discovered that that laminectomy you had, while successful uh, for many, many years for you, was really ultimately a Band-Aid. And yeah. a high percentage of people who have discectomies and laminectomies uh, re-herniate the disc um, and require additional surgery. And unfortunately, uh, the majority of spine surgeons in the U.S. and Canada that see those people say fusion is going to be the solution. Um, and, and really, it's been... You know, the, the truth of the matter is uh, there are some people who fusion is the best solution for. Um, and there are some people who are really fired up about getting disc replacement. And they send in an evaluation uh, or their, their films into Ananda hoping that they're going to be a disc replacement candidate. And sometimes that they're not because of instability or other, other factors. Um, and so in, in those circumstances, even there, you need, to, you need to weigh, you know, do you... Um, if first, if you can desk, if you can get, get disc replacement, my, by all means, get disc replacement um, to avoid all the additional complications that come with fusion. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're going to get fusion, do you want to do it by someone who's you know an absolute expert at it and has done thousands of them? Um, we just, Mikey, and you may have seen this. A guy posted in the ADR group um, that he's got uh, someone scheduled. He's scheduled for fusion in a couple weeks. Um, his doctors have said disc replacement is not going to be a solution for you. And I, I've just said over and over that there are some people I will accept an opinion like that from, but they've got to be an absolute expert on disc replacement to tell me that disc replacement's not appropriate. Right. It'd, be, yeah. uh, it'd be like going to someone who, let's say they don't do total knee replacements. They just do arthro arthroscopic surgery and they say, oh yeah, total knee's not for you. Well, are you an expert at it? Uh, so for that reason, and especially with, compl with the complimentary consultation, right? Um, send in your films. In fact, if you're interested in doing that, you can do that. Just go to inanda.com. That's spelled E-N-A-N-D-E.com, inanda.com. And you can send in for a complimentary consultation. And it's something, man, Mike, I think you feel the same way. It's like, no matter who you're working with, no matter what you've got scheduled, like you, you, there's nothing to lose by getting that consultation, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's free. So what do you have to lose? You know? So it's, it's just the anticipation of waiting to hear back from Dr. Rare Lang, but he's, again, he's very quick about it. I think once we sent over everything over, it was maybe a week, week and a half that I had to wait. Um, felt like a month, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you know. it feels like forever, right? <laughs> Yeah, but you know, we just had a we just had a, a a gentleman in here that you know he heard about the the live cast. You seen it on Facebook, and he stopped in. He was just told, I think, yesterday that he is he needs a fusion. He's had uh, three or three or four disectomy laminectomies. So we invited him over here to the gym today to meet with us around two thirty. We we brought him a book. You know, the fuse or not the fuse, gave it to him. Um, so he's definitely exploring that M6 disc now as well because he is a bodybuilder, you know, and he knows that if he ends up with a fusion, it essentially, uh, he, could, he would lose that passion 
and never be able to do it again. So he's, he's broken right now, but I think he left here today hopeful um, and feeling better that there's other alternatives for him. Yeah. I'll, um, it's, it's great that you're giving him hope and, and just knowing that he has options because yeah. a lot, unfortunately, a lot of surgeons aren't giving everybody all their options. Um, you know, we see that. So uh, we posted a link, I posted a link um, for the getting <laughs> complimentary evaluation um, and, that you can get. And then for those people interested as well, you can get a copy of To Fuse or Not To Fuse, uh, the book that Dr. Ritter Lang and uh, Dr. Jan Spiller wrote. You can get that as well uh, through that website. In fact, I'm gonna, I'll just get that posted. Uh, so um, uh, to reinforce some of this stuff, I saw that Jim uh, Webster posted that he had a couple discectomies prior to getting, uh, prior to going to Germany to get ADR, um, to kind of reinforce that for Tariq's question. Um, and then um, let's see here. Dana wrote, doctors in the U.S. and Canada typically say ADR is not for you because they don't do that type of surgery. And, mm -hmm. and uh, she's very right about that. Um, like you had a doc your doctor, right? Said ADR, it's not a thing. And that was a year and a half ago. Yeah. Year and a half. Yeah. Uh, I, I go back and prove him wrong and, and kind of show him um, where I'm at today. But um, I just yeah, fact, somebody suggested you send your workout video to him. Uh, someone <laughs> on the chat log uh, suggested. Justin, I should probably do that for sure. So, And I have to say, I, there's a gentleman I know who's an absolutely fantastic uh, spine surgeon. And uh, I asked him one time about ADR. And he said, yeah, he says, it's, it's a really great. And he goes, I'm kind of the, I'm the guy in the area who's done the most of them. And um, I asked him how many that was. And he said, ah, about 100. And... Um, I thought about that and I just stacking them up to surgeons like Dr. Ritter Lang's done, I think it's 6,000 or something like that, 6,000 implants, I think, um, so far. And that level of expertise is really important. Um, I, I, it's funny, we, we want to take our car to a good mechanic, but sometimes we'll take our, our bodies to the one that the insurance will pay for yeah. um, instead of taking them to the best to the to the best surgeon i i, I see that yes. uh, oh and Tariq Tariq said hey thanks for responding to my questions one more please is driving trucking still can that still be work that you can do after adr or do you guys recommend starting a new career mike i think you have some unique perspective on this too don't you so once i got back from germany and like i say we we got right off the plane i mean i don't know how many hours we were on that plane and then we jumped in the car and we drove two and a half, maybe close to three hours home. Then six, maybe seven weeks after I was home, I flew to Windsor, or no, I'm sorry, Madison, Wisconsin. And I um, picked up my new company vehicle because that's where my, my, the company I work for um, is out of. And I drove that pickup truck home, which is roughly about 13 hours. So I was only six or seven weeks out of surgery. And I drove that truck home. So, and I made, I made more than probably half the trip in the first day I drove. So, wow. yeah. yeah I'm, sure, I'm sure Tariq's going to tell us that that's, that's a good start to a day, right? For a, for a professional truck driver. That's uh, right. If Tariq, if that's what you do. Um, I would say, Tariq, that that's going to vary from person to person. Um, so my brother-in-law who had three level lumbar disc replacement, um, he goes on road trips with his kids, uh, his, with his whole family and we go with them. And I know I've seen him do 12 hour uh, drives. Um, I'm, you know, he's got to do some stretching and core exercises and things like that. Um, I'll tell you this summer, we're going to do a two week road trip to, uh, from California up to Banff, Canada. And I figured out, I can't remember, but in that time, in that two weeks, we're going to do 47 hours of driving or maybe it's 67. I can't remember. It's ridiculous anyway. And he's, he's not worried about it at all. Um, but you know, you're going to find other people though, who go through this and they go, you know, really sitting is not my friend. And, um, and, and like Mike said, you know, you want to be active. Uh, so Tariq, I, I would tell you that it's going to depend on each person's body being different. 
and what they do for that body uh, for conditioning. And I think Mike would be the first person to echo that. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, this has been great. If anyone's got any other questions, get them in right now because we're going to land this plane. Um, Mike uh, and Eric, uh, in fact, Eric, unmute there so we can hear from hear from you as well. Again, um, I really just appreciate, uh, well, I just was dying the sense of humor that you guys had when I talked to you first remotely when you were in the Park Hotel. Right. Um, but it is great. You guys seem like you have a great relationship. Uh, Eric, you you're, uh, you're you seem like you're a great, smarter, more handsome brother uh, to uh, to Mike. It's debatable. Ah, uh, well. It's debatable. <laughs> Still debatable. <laughs> he's, he's the, here, you know? oh, yeah. So, um, so Eric was a big part of the open up this gym too. So he was he was around and helping out and watching me work pretty hard and move all this stuff in here, which isn't light by any means. So, and it was a lot of it was a lot of twelve, thirteen, fourteen hour days, and the back held up great. Okay, now that component just hit me. Spin that camera around one more time. Hang on, I'm going to spotlight you because I. Oh my gosh, it just didn't even. I didn't even think about it. Spin that camera. Uh, oh, I ho highlighted the wrong one. Hang on, Mike. Um, spin that camera around. You and your brother moved all this in. Well, me and uh, my brother, my brother, and a bunch of other people helped along the way. Um. This place had to be completely painted, clean top to bottom. Um, so this was paintbrushes and hands, climbing around on ladders, um, you know, up in the ceilings, putting in camera systems, um, you name it. Well, th there was one moment in particular, Everett, when I was back in upstate New York. I was in upstate New York last Christmas and this most recent Christmas, and seeing Michael um, is night and day. And the, the section he just passed is, I remember, I watched him move all that big equipment, and that was, that was great. But right in the cardio, you'll see along that little step up, there's all these cords there. And there was one moment where um, he was down on his hands and knees and, he, and he's twisting to, to get screws and to hold those cords in place to power the cardio machines. And, you know, I was kind of overcome a little bit emotionally because I was realizing that he's doing a motion that he never would have done. Um, he was unable to do um, less than a year ago. And it was just amazing to me to see him doing this. I mean, so the, I mean, it, the, 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 overwhelmingness of that he's opening a gym that he's actually opening his own business and that um just to see that range of motion was just phenomenal in him um because he in the last time i had been home for the holiday um i think i he finally broke down and vacuumed the floor the first floor of his house and was out for the rest of the day and that was just a half an hour of an entire 10 to 15 day process for him that he did without even thinking once or about his back or, you know, wondering if his back was going to hurt him or how bad he'd feel the next day. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. I just don't even know what to say. I, Mike, I, uh, just to think of, heck, okay. I haven't had back surgery. Okay. But I'm a, but by history, I'm a vocational rehab counselor who's worked with thousands of people with back <clears throat> and hundreds of people with failed backs. Okay. I can't imagine moving all that stuff and uh, and doing everything that you guys did and walking the next day. How, um, if that's not a testament to you, you know the surgery you had, the implant, the surgeon, all of that, Mike. I, I, I just put it all away. Really am. You know, I'm because of that weather right now. Uh, <laughs> hey, by the way, another. It's chilly today, Mike. It's only sixty-five degrees. <laughs> Hey, another question from Kenneth. He actually asked a couple questions, and let me get to him real quick. First, uh, Mike, he asked, did you try stem cells um, before going, or did you consider doing stem cell? No, I looked at it. Um, but, again, you know, based on I'm, – I'm no doctor, but based on the way my, the way my um, MRIs looked, I, I didn't think stem cell would even be a thing for me. I, I read up a little bit on it. I will say that I did take some – uh, stem cell, like, uh, I don't know, it was like some powder or whatever. Just, I thought maybe it would help 
um, take the pain away, but nothing, nothing for me really helped. I can't say that stem cell isn't an alternative. I guess there's a lot of studies that there's some good things happening with stem cell, but um, I just, I don't see how it can physically replace what is possibly missing. So, um, I mean, for me, ADR was, was the way to go. I think it is the only way to go. Yep. So another question he asked is, how's your range of motion and is running okay for you? Yeah, I uh, might've missed the, you maybe, <laughs> yeah, we've, uh, there's a video posted and I'll make sure to post it on the, um, Ananda page too. Uh, the Ananda Facebook page of him doing uh, his exercise workout and uh, yeah so how's your range of motion and how's running yeah I can I can touch my toes I can bend backwards I can do sit-ups I can do leg lifts and straight leg lifts um, I can do squats I can run um, there's nothing I really cannot do that I used to do in the first place so I don't I don't have any limitation the only thing I chose or choose not to do is deadlifts, but I'm sure I can do them. I, I do them, but I do it very, very lightweight and high rep, and um, that's it. So everything else I'm back to doing, um, and I'm constantly told to slow down and uh, not overdo it. I'm yelled at quite a bit for that, but I feel good. I, you know, when you feel this good, it's hard to not just go 100 miles an hour. You know, and, I, and I'm that guy anyway. I'll, I'll die standing up. So, I love it. All right. Well, um, thank you guys uh, for uh, being there. Uh, tell Anna thank you as well. I really appreciate her perspective as a spouse. There she is. Um, I, I think that it's, um, I think the family goes through every bit uh, that the patient goes through. It's the the heart the hard part about back injuries. And those people who are watching feel this in spades is that it's a hidden disability. Um, it's not like something where you're wearing a cast or a brace or something where someone knows that you are experiencing pain. And so they expect you to just be able to do everything that, uh, you, that a healthy person with a healthy spine can do. And so that's when you, oh, can you help me move? Or, hey, you know, mister, can you help me lift this, right? You're walking through a store and there's some, uh, some, you know, lady who needs help with something. Hey, can you, you look like a strapping young man. Can you help me move this? And, and you're in that spot of either saying, no, I can't or doing it and getting hurt more. Um, it's that hidden disability. And then at home, you're in pain that, that the people around you just really cannot experience. And as a result, you miss out on um, family activities. You miss out on things with your spouse uh, you know, uh, work, it, all of those things are just brutal. Um, and at the same time, the family suffers too. And I've seen this over and over. I remember interviewing Art Beverly before he had five level disc replacement and interviewing his wife and what they went through and how life is different now. Um, him being able to lift his kids for the first time in, uh, in years. Um, and it's, it's an amazing thing. So um, I will share with all of you, if you're interested in disc replacement, you can find out more, go to Inanda.com. That's E-N-A-N-D-E.com. Um, go to Inanda.com. You can get a complimentary uh, consultation through there. You can get a copy of uh, this book, To Fuse or Not To Fuse, um, which I think is a really powerful resource. Um, they'll send you the paperback for free. Uh, you can also watch other pa other interviews, other patient testimonials. Um, not everybody recovers in the way that Mike did, okay? Um, uh, everybody's path to recovery is different. Um, some are short, some are long recoveries. Um, and so you want to watch more stories and learn more about it. Um, but whatever you do, whatever your course is that you're planning right now, just educate yourself, uh, learn more. Uh, the more you learn, the better you're going to be, the better outcome you're going to have, regardless of what the decision is that you make. I think education is, is the key. And if you're watching this, you've watched it for an hour and a half, and I really appreciate your time. Uh, Eric, Mike, Anna, you guys are awesome. Thanks for carving out the time on a Saturday uh, to do this. Um, My pleasure. Yeah. Super great. Mike and Anna, congrats on the gym. Uh, Thank you. Hope you guys keep tearing it up.
Yeah. yeah. We're, we're looking to expand here maybe four months. So awesome. So we're, uh, we're doing well. Things are good. All right. We'll be looking for updates for sure. Um, uh, definitely would love that. Um, and in fact, Mike and Anna, please, please, please go back go to the Ananda Facebook page and post stuff, uh, your successes as this goes. I know we all want to see, it's like, we're all, I think we all feel like we're involved in your story now. Uh, yeah. Please yeah. Keep well, I will say this when, you know, after, after ADR, ADR surgery, typically when you don't hear from somebody for a long time, it's because things are going so, so, so well that uh, you just don't have time to, to slow down and, and post things. So um, I know that we've been a little out of the realm of me following the ADR page as much as I'd like to, but things are going well. I'm feeling 110%. Things are great. So, yeah. Woo, just keep it up. Just keep yeah. it up. Um, Absolutely. And, and uh, by the way, um, apparently one of our people watching is a doctor. So that's super cool. Um, and I think Kenneth was... Uh, um, uh, posting. So that's, uh, that's terrific. Tariq asked about the M6 and I, and, and if we can extend for just a minute, Mike, tell us about the M6 disc and, and, and why you decided to go that route. Well, I mean, the M6 is like the Cadillac, I think of, um, ADR it's made right in the States, Sunnyvale, California, if I'm not mistaken. So big shout out to Spinal Kinetics. Um, cause those guys are incredible. Um, unfortunately you have to go abroad to get that disc right now, but, um, you know, the FDA has to get it together and start, you know, thinking about this more because this disc is, uh, this makes you bionic. This thing is strong. It moves in all sorts of directions. You have full function of your, of your back. It protects upper and lower discs. Um, the thing is built like a tank. I mean, I, I held it in my hand. I got to literally feel the thing in my hand. Um, I was impressed by this disc. So if, if it were me, that's, that's the one I'd go with. There's a lot of different discs out there. I did research on a lot of them. And when it all came down to it, Spinal Kinetics is the way I went. And the M6L is living well in my L4, L5 region right now. So, and it's, it's holding up and it's doing exactly what I want it to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, thank you again, and hope hope everybody got your questions answered. If you are watching the replay, um, go ahead and put your questions in anyway, uh, and we'll do our best to uh, respond to them. I know Mike and uh, Anna will be watching uh, this thread some too, so if you've got any questions specific for them, please feel free to ask them. Um, if you've got questions on the medical side, uh, Dana is the Dana Gentry as a case manager is happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you all again. Um, and we will close this up. Um, so join us. Uh, we'll be doing another uh, ADR live cast shortly. In fact, my plan is to get Dr. Ritter Lang and Dr. Jan Spiller on for a live interview. Uh, cool. The time zones make that challenging, but we want to get them on for an interview and do a live Q&A as well. And I know that that would be a great opportunity. So there we go. Everybody, take care, and we will see you uh, on the next live cast. Uh, and thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.